Hey guys, welcome back to BeginnerDJLessons.com. In this week's video, we're going right back to the basics. This is a video for everybody out there who's never used DJ decks before, has never used any DJ software before. I'm gonna teach you how to DJ on your mobile phone using DJ2 by algorithm. Let's do it. Boof. Okay guys, I'm very aware that most of the people who are watching this video are not professional DJs and most of the people who are watching this video have never DJed before. Therefore, downloading this app and seeing this screen is their very first introduction to any kind of DJing. So this video is all about getting right back to the basics and teaching DJing to people who are looking at this for the first time not knowing what anything does. Okay, so let's get into it. DJing is all about having one song playing, lining up a second song, and feeding the first song into the second song. Then while this song is playing, getting another track lined up and feeding this song that's playing back into this song seamlessly. So it just seems like one long song that's playing throughout the entire evening. That's all DJing really is. The first thing I wanna point out to you is you'll notice the screen's quite symmetrical. The reason for that is because all the controls on this side are all to do with this song that's playing and all the controls on this side are all to do with this DJ deck and the music that's playing on this DJ deck. So I'm going to run you through all the controls but just notice that most of the things I'm telling you about mimic on either side of the screen, okay? This is a DJ deck here, this is where you will load music onto and you can press this little button up here to load the songs you want onto this DJ deck. This is a slider here which will take the volume towards this side of the deck or towards this side of the deck over here, okay? So if it was slid all the way over here, you'd only hear the music from this deck and if you slid it all the way over here, you'd only hear the music from this deck and you can use this to fade one song into the next. This is the play button. Once you press play, it will also function as a stop button, which you can hit again and it will stop the song. This slider here is a tempo slider. All songs have got different BPMs or beats per minute, and that is literally how many times the song beats in one minute. So a song with 128 beats per minute is a much faster song than a song that's 90 beats per minute. Now, with DJing, a little tip for you is to always play music with similar BPMs because the songs will blend into each other better than if you're playing one song that's going boom, 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 to another song that's boom, boom. It'll feel really jarring for your audience. I'm going to come onto that later on, but... The beauty of this thing here is you can slide it up or down and speed a song up or slow a song down if you want to help match it to the other song you're about to bring in. And bear in mind, you can also slide this up and down. So if this song was way quicker than this one, you could speed this song up and slow this song down so they matched, okay? Now, the other thing I need to mention about this which is really clever about this program, is when you slow a song down, it has the tendency to kind of go like that. Or if you speed it up, it'll go da -da 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 -da. This happens when you're DJing. If I slide this all the way down, it will typically make the sound lower. But if you press that button there, the really clever thing about this program is it'll keep the pitch of the song identical. So if the song is in a C sharp and you drop it, it's not changing to a different key by slowing down. It will stay in exactly the same key, but just play slower. This up here will show you the BPM. So if it's 120 BPM or 90 or whatever, it'll say here. And this up here will show you what key the song is in as well. And by clicking this, you can put the song up a pitch or down a pitch without changing the speed. So you can actually make it higher or lower using this thing here, which again is clever when you're mixing one song into another song. It sounds more pleasing to mix one song of one key into another song of a similar key or the same key, okay? And by you can pitch the songs properly so it won't sound so odd when you're blending from one song to another song. That's slightly more advanced though, so I wouldn't worry too much about that, but I'm just running you through the controls. This down here is a cue point. So if you've got the song to a point bit of the song you liked, 
you can set that as a cue point and then this button here with the arrow will always take you back to that cue point. And remember, if you move it to a different part of the song and press that cue button again, it will set a new cue point and this button will take you back to that new cue point, okay? Okay guys, so before we go any further, I'm gonna load a song onto this deck, okay? So you hit this button here, and what it'll ask you to do is sign into your Spotify or sign into your iTunes account, okay? Um, if you click playlist, you can go to your already made playlist in Spotify, for example, Phil's Party, and you can click a song. As soon as you hit that song, it will start playing as well, okay? So that's something to note. If it's the first track you load in, it'll start playing. Once that song's on, you can press play, stop, and you can of course do kind of scratching kind of stuff, which I wouldn't really recommend on an iPhone, but there we go, you can do it. Now. When you click this button here, it will bring up a screen with different controls. These controls here can affect the lows, mids, and highs. So you can take away the lows, add more lows, take away highs, add more highs. So for example, lows of a song are typically the lower sections, so the deeper bits. So a prime example with dance music is the low is the kick drum, the bit that's going boom, boom, boom in the background. And the highs would be more like the hi-hats going tss, tss, or the vocals. Um, so you can take away the kick drum. So I'm gonna do that as an example now. So close it, play, there. Take away the lows, take away the highs, boost the highs, boost the mids, or boost the lows. Now bear in mind, this is playing off the speaker on my iPhone as well, so there's not gonna be a hell of a lot of bass anyway. But it gives you an example of what those things can do. Now, this will come in really handy when you get a bit better at DJing and you wanna start doing more complicated blends on your phone. You can start boosting and taking away mids, lows, highs, and blending into the other track that's playing over here, which I'll probably cover in a different video. So the other thing you can do here is there's a low pass or high pass filter to here. Pushing that down towards low pass filter is the same as taking away the highs, then the mids, then the lows, okay? So watch this. And it leaves just the lows, which is the, which is the same as doing this. And as you can imagine, going up towards the highs does the same thing. It's like cutting the lows, the mids, then the highs. So listen again, okay? Okay, cool. So that's that section there. Okay, so the next thing you've got then is this thing here, which is effect. Now what DJs like to do sometimes is add a bit of an effect into the music that's playing. Now another top tip for you guys is don't overdo this. You don't wanna be using loads of effects because people know these songs and as soon as you add effects, people will recognize that you're doing stuff. And your job as a DJ really is to kind of blend into the background and be a bit invisible so they can just be taken away by the music and they're not thinking, what's he doing to this song? So this is what happens here. You can select different effects here. There's essential effects here and then there's additional effects down here that you can buy if you want to. But these effects up here are quite cool. Let's put echo on. So you touch anywhere in this area here. You can see that blue dot is following my finger around. Clicking down here will play in less of the effect and playing up here will play more of the effect. But you'll notice there's a cross because there's HP, which also stands for high pass, and LP, which stands for low pass, which means if I put my finger up there, it's more going to high pass it, which plays more of the highs like I just demonstrated, or low pass it, which plays lo more of the lows. So you can add in this effect and start um, filter up or filter down. So I'm going to show you now.
So, it's really cool. It's good fun, you know. It's good fun to play with these. And I'm not going to run you through what all those things do, but you can just play around and listen to it. You don't need to know what they do. You just need to know what they sound like, okay? So you can play around those in your own time. Um, now, there's a couple of other interesting ways you can add effect. Instant, you can just click a button and the app will add that effect in for as long as you hold the button for, which is, again, it's quite cool. I actually prefer this, I think. Let me show you. So, quite cool. Again, guys, don't overdo these, but they're just fun to play around with. And then there's manual where you can add in more of the effect and you can see how dry or wet you want it. And you can change sliders. I mean, when I say dry or wet, it's basically similar to this. It's how much of the effect you want to add in and how much, how deep the effect you want it to be. So that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of what's going on there. Next one is looping. So you can add loops to a track if you want to by just clicking this and it will create a loop like that. And of course you can make the loops longer or smaller by hitting the arrows either side. Or you can just say start the loop here and stop the loop there, so you can do this, watch. So that's another way of doing it. Now loops are really handy for if you're trying to do a blend and you want to keep it on one part of the song for longer. That is when loop comes in handy, but again it's more advanced. I just want to show you everything that this app can do. And finally, remember I was telling you about the hot cue, the cue points down here? So setting a cue point and going back to that cue point. Well, you can add multiple cue points in. So you could say, I want a, a cue point here. I also want a cue point here. And I also want a cue point here. At different points of the song that you like. And these buttons will take you to those different parts of the song. So that's if you wanted to add more effects. And the other thing is, once you've put those in, they will stay there from that point on as well, which is really cool, okay? As you probably saw, when I added a track in, a graphic appeared up here. This is the song here, and you can use it as a visual cue when you're DJing to see what's coming up in the song. So, for example, the wider bits and the deeper colours are usually a bassier bits of the song, which are louder. So I would guess that around here is a drop. And then I can also see straight away that here is where the drop just finishes. So this is really useful if you want to get to a certain bit of the song quickly. You can put your finger on and drag, for example, right up to the second drop and you can see visually where it is. This number up here is interesting. It doesn't tell you how far into the song you are. It tells you how long you've got left in the song, which is interesting. If you're messing around over here picking a song, you can instantly see I've got 28 seconds before this song finishes. So it counts down to the time you need to have another track lined up over here. Then you've obviously got the name up here. And as I mentioned earlier, BPM and the pitch. And to give you an idea of the pitch changing, which I showed you earlier, watch. It's got higher, and then listen to it get lower. Now, if you wanna keep it the same, hit that button, and now watch. It'll stay the same key, but it will have the same effect on the speed. which is a really, really clever feature for such a simple, basic app. I have to say that's really cool. So up here as well, you've also got the key of a song. Again, you can click on this, click that button so it's highlighted, and you can make the song a higher key or a lower key by just flicking through, which is really clever if you want to match songs. Now, you wouldn't do this while you were playing a song, but you do it to the song that was currently not playing. But just to give you an example, and guys, this is going to sound weird, listen to the pitch of the song go up while I mess around with these.
And one thing I'll tell you about this as well, guys, is as, as weird as that sounds, pitching it up or pitching it down, you will be amazed at how quickly people adjust to the song being in a different key. People will not listen to this and realize it's that out. They won't realize that that's like three keys or two keys out from what the original was. So that's quite interesting. Okay guys, so a couple of interesting other little things about this app before we get into doing a couple of first blends for you. So you can click this button here, which brings out different effects, okay, like this. Right, which actually are quite good fun, I have to say. Like, I thought it was a bit tacky when I first saw it, but it's actually quite fun to play with. Like, you can kind of come up with different beats and stuff, which almost leads you into kind of music production. You know, or... It's quite fun to play around with. Now, you're not supposed to really just sit there and make a beat on the spot, even though I found myself doing that. I think it's really fun. What you're kind of supposed to do is have, and you can do this, okay? You can close it up and then swipe from your finger there across. So as the song's playing, you can essentially go. I have no idea why anybody would actually want to do that unless they were taking the piss and having a laugh with it. Um, but again, it's just fun. It's just a funny thing to do, you know. Actually, you know, maybe more so if you added another song over here. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you perhaps. I, I wouldn't do it guys. I wouldn't do it at all, but it's just fun. It's just a fun thing and it's there Okay, so the other thing I wanted to show you was this button here this squiggly line if you click that it shows you a screen with Waveforms on it and these are essentially zoomed in versions of these up here Okay, so as you can see there's the waveforms. Well, this is a very zoomed in version of what's going up on up there but the reason why you would use this is to do manual beat matching on this program, which I'd recommend you kind of played around with. Um, but I, I'll come back to that in a moment, okay? But I just wanted to show you, you can get to this screen here, and I, I'm going to come back to this screen, okay? Okay, guys, so before we go any further, if you are thinking, all I really want this program to do is most of the work for me, I just want to select what songs I want, this app actually has your back and can do that no problem. There's an option down here called Auto Mix. And what it will do is it will remember the playlist you're on, Phil's Party, and automatically blend two songs. It will even select songs, the next songs for you, or whatever song you tell it to do within these settings. And at the end of one song, blend into the next. So without even going into any of these options here, I'm just going to show you how well this works. So as you can see, it slowed it, slid this thing across to this side, so it's just playing this music, and selected the next track. Now I'm going to go right to the end of this song so you can see what happens, okay? Here we go, just watch what happens. So you saw what happened, as soon as it got to the end of that song, it started playing this song and just slid it across, okay? now. That's not really DJing, and it wasn't done very well. I mean, the two songs were not lined up at all. They weren't beat matched properly. One song just started playing when the other song was finishing. So there wasn't really much going on there. But we can change some of these settings that might help. Now, before I go any further, I actually just want to explain to you what beat matching is, okay? Every song has a drum beat. Dum, 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 dum. And when you're blending another song in, the best thing you can do as a DJ is to blend the second song in to the same beat. So you get the two beats lined up like this. And then when you blend one song to the next, everybody's still dancing to the same beat. 
which is really relevant because it's less jarring for people and they'll feel like they're just dancing to one continuous track rather than having one track play and then another track just comes in and then you know it just sounds odd and you take this other song away. Now that is the best this program's really going to do on auto mix. Just to show you a couple of the other settings, you can put auto mix on radio play where you can click it and it will take whatever song is currently playing, find out other songs that are very similar to it and just mix those in so you've got an endless radio play. You can queue up other songs you want or you can select what playlist you want the songs to come from. It will automatically take the playlist that you chose that original song out of to continue playing songs from. Shuffle mode, we all know what shuffle mode is. Transition. So you can have different transitions. As you saw there, standard is just where it dips the volume of one and brings up the volume of the next. But backspin will add like a bit of a kind of woo effect to it. Echo will echo one into the next. There's loads of different ones. I'll show you backspin for a laugh, okay? So kind of fun, but I mean, again, you wouldn't want to have that happening on every single song. So I always have it, if you were going to have it, I would have it on standard mode. Yeah, like that. Um, duration, how much of the songs blend over each other for, three seconds. When does the second track start playing? It starts playing 10 seconds before the first track finishes, okay? So that's the trigger point. But of course you can change those two if you want. If you've got a cue point set, you can tell it to jump to that cue point. So for example, if I knew I really loved the song starting here, about there, I could set a cue point, and then when it loaded this song, it would play from that cue point, okay? Then there's auto sync BPM. Remember what I was saying about the two drums going? If one song's 120 beats per minute and another song is 125, it will actually match the two BPMs. Again, I'm going to come onto that in a little bit, but I just wanted to show you, just tell you it can also do that. So, guys, if you wanted to just plug this in and have the program do all the work for you, it can, okay? So that's how you would do it. Now guys, I am gonna round off this video by giving you a really basic beat matching lesson on this phone. However, this is a basic beat matching lesson. And if you guys are interested in DJing and you wanna learn a lot more, I have a full course at beginnerdjlessons.com where I will be able to teach you everything you need to know, which will teach you stuff far more advanced than this. And if you guys are interested in DJing and interested in getting your first pair of DJ decks, my course has you covered. I will teach you everything you need to know. Okay, guys, now with all that said, I want to give you a quick lesson on beat matching. So if you're kind of interested in DJing and you kind of want to learn a bit about it, I'm going to give you a little exercise now that's really going to help you with learning how to do beat matching, okay? I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. So what you want to find is two tracks that are just very kind of bass kick drum heavy so just a strong dum tsh, dum tsh, like this something you can just easily tap along to and you want to get another song which is very kind of similar vibe Very simple, very basic tracks that are just easy to tap along to, okay? The two tracks I've got, if you want to mimic mine, I've got Short Line by Thomas Jack or Rivers by Thomas Jack. I think it's a remix, um, but it's these two here. You'll recognize them, okay? So I've got these two loaded in. Now, the first thing you want to do before you do anything is make sure that the BPMs are the same. So, by the way, if this slider is off here, you can get it back perfectly to the middle by double tapping and it'll go to the middle, and that will go to the middle as well, okay? Check whether the BPMs are the same, because for this example, you need the two tracks to be identical, okay? As you can see, this one's 120, this one's 122. So what you wanna do is slide this one down so it matches 120. Now, if you're anything like me, this is really tricky and frustrating for you, because you can never get it exactly. There, I did it. But it's quite hard, because my fingers are so 
they're not delicate enough and sometimes you lift it off and it doesn't work so here's a top tip for you this sync button will do it automatically so as you can see that's 122 that's 120 i'm going to sync this to this track so i'm going to click this sync button here boom it's on 120 120 so that's what you want to do two tracks that are identical and it can't be 20.1 it has to be 20.0 they have to be identical okay now the next thing i want you to do is come to the first track this is the track that's going to be playing and we're going to blend this track into this track i want you to click this here and come to loop actually so get to the end of the song which is just a bit that will sound like this okay and we're going to put a loop on it so you can put a loop on there And you can even make it a longer loop if you want to eight. But what you'll notice is that's just gonna play on loop, okay? And we need that to just be playing on loop because otherwise what you'll find is the song will just run out. Um, it'll just get to the end of the song. And it's frustrating because we're we gonna be practicing beat matching here. And you just want that loop to be playing constantly so we can practice beat matching this track to that. So you now got that on a loop. Okay, now we're going to come over to this track over here and we're going to click this button which is going to show you the waveforms. Now as you can see on these waveforms there's lines that go across. These lines line up with the beats so there's a line on every beat pretty much. And every four lines you'll see there's one that's a more solid yellow like that. So it'll be one, two, three, four and then there's another yellow line here you see now those lines signify bars every song is written in bars it's usually one two three four one two three four and you want those two yellow lines to line up like this in what we're about to do okay so we're going to go to the beginning of this song here so get to the beginning the first one will always be a yellow bar although in this program it doesn't always show yeah there it is it's a yellow bar so we're going to go to there, or if you wanted to go to a different part of the song, so if you wanted to go a little bit further into here, you can do. But make sure you always go to the yellow line and hit that cue point there, which sets a cue point. And then you can hit this. And it'll always go back to that point there. But for this example, I'm just going to go from the beginning because I know it starts with a strong... Um, it starts with a strong drum beat. So I'm going to click that bit, the cue button, and then... You can tap it. When you take your finger off, it stops playing again. So this is the button we're going to be focusing on from this point on is the Q button. Okay, so what we're going to do is this. We're going to play this track and we're going to tap along to it. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And I'm going to start tapping this button in the same way we did that, okay? And I'm actually going to set the cue point from that yellow bit there. So loop, loop there. Let's see. Yellow line, yellow line, yellow line. I'm gonna start tapping along with this button to this beat, okay, like this. Once I feel I've got it down, I'm going to hold that button and then press play with this finger here. So you press play, take your finger off and it will continue playing. Do that one more, do that one more time for you, okay? So this button will take you to the beginning. Hit play. You can take your finger off and it will continue playing. So you're tapping along to this beat over here. And when it gets to that yellow line there, I want you to hold, you keep your finger down, then press play, okay? So watch me. Okay, so I tapped along, and as soon as I saw that yellow line come up to that red marker there, I held my finger down and pressed play. Now, sometimes you won't get this perfect, and it will be slightly off like this. which sounds terrible. 
but that will happen quite a lot. When that happens, you use this minus or plus to align the line. So as you can see, that yellow line is slightly lower or ahead of this line. So I'm gonna hit that minus button to make sure they catch up. Watch me do this now. I'm gonna hit that minus button to align these perfectly and you'll hear them come into sync. Now they're in sync perfectly. Okay, so once you've done that, you've kind of done your first beat match. And that's really the first thing I want you guys to just practice. And what you can do is once you've beat matched them, you can move this slider over to this song here and you've done your first beat match. I'm gonna just give, I'm just gonna wrap, wrap this up by giving you an example, okay? And one last little tip for you as well, you want to get to a point where you can kind of go mostly on visuals. So for example, you could have this over here, and I'll do the same thing, I'll get it blind up, I'll press play, then I'll move the slider across, okay? So here we go. Okay guys, so there we are. That will be your first beat matching and your first introduction to DJing on a phone. Now obviously there's a lot more to that. You know, you want you could get to the point where you start doing more complicated blending or different tricks and tips. I may do more videos on this. If you want me to do more videos on DJing on an iPhone, make sure you write it in the comments below, okay? If you guys have enjoyed this video and it's been helpful and informative, please leave a like on the video, leave a couple of comments, because when you guys like the video and leave comments, YouTube shows my videos to more people and more people see my videos, which is what I want to happen. Um, so if you could do that, that would be really, really amazing. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel right here where I do weekly videos all about DJing. And of course, if you wanna learn, learn more about DJing, just go to my website at beginnerdjlessons.com where I will teach you everything you need to know about DJing. Guys, I hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching.